What's up? Y'all want some early Laker basketball talk. It's funny. When Sino don't talk about LeBron, everybody's screaming and keeps sending me stuff about LeBron. <laughs> I thought all I could do was talk about LeBron. Told you, you see what happened? When you, when you give them what they want, then they start begging for you to talk about LeBron. Why? No need to talk about him. But y'all lust for people to talk about this bum. Y'all lust for it. Fine. Give them what they want. Now, Coach Darvin Ham has went the full, full letter and is taking full responsibility in helping build and shape this team to the position he's at now. This team was never at the level it was at last year as far as talent-wise. They feel they're one player away or another big man from making a long push towards an NBA championship, meaning that even if LeBron sat his butt down, the team should still be able to win games, meaning that we hope he sit his butt down. So that we can win games. <laughs> because he's in the way, actually. Everybody is tripping over a clip I said three years ago about LeBron. Somebody else just picked it up. Me saying he's nobody but Sean Kemp. Hell, that was inaccurate. Sean Kemp is way better than LeBron. So my thing is, uh oh. If Kemp just didn't, you know, fall victim to his, you know, outside life was beating him, he couldn't balance that back then. But he played when it was real. He wasn't one-dimensional like LeBron. Now... I'm not here to bash this guy, really. It's just that, look, the guy's going to be 39 years old next season. I don't care how much EPO you keep shooting this horse up with. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. The game has passed you by. You had your run. It's someone else's turn. Sit down. Let Darvin Ham take this team to where it needs to be. He did a great job coaching last season. His first year ever as head coach, he goes to the Western Conference Finals. First year as head coach. Further than you got with Fogel. And please do not mention the bubble. Not to a man of intelligence. Now, the storm is brewing. Yes, a storm is coming. What is that storm? The injury bugs. Old age. Drama from within the organization because LeBron's going to want to make changes. They got a chance to get Christian Wood, which I don't even know how that's even humanly possible. But they have a chance to get Christian Wood. To me, it makes zero sense. If I got a chance to get Christian Wood, I'm going to get Christian Wood. There ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. What's the conversation going to be about? Why are we even debating what are we going to do? That is it, right there. There ain't no debate on what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Grab Christian Wood. 
The man can shoot from the outside. He can rebound. He can block shots. I mean, what? I can't believe he's out there. I'm like, Dallas didn't get Christian Wood back? So the storm is always going to brew when you're dealing with the Lakers. That storm and dark cloud is always going to be there because the dark cloud is LeBron James. He brings it with him everywhere he goes. And it's going to sink the whole ship. They always going to go down. He's the dark cloud of this. Wherever he goes, whatever team he goes to, he brings it with him every year. And Stephen A. Smith, will you quit telling me that the NBA is much better when the Lakers are involved in the playoffs? Will you, will you quit telling people this stupidity? I'm sorry. To, it, it, it's just like the NBA is more exciting when the Lakers are in contention. It's more exciting. It's not. It's just that you guys are going to talk about the Lakers because LeBron James is on the team. So you guys got to talk about him. If he played for the Chickawa Nuwambes, y'all be talking about the Chickawa Nuwambes. Well, you, you, you know the Nuwambes, you know, they, they, they kind of crazy. Yeah, the Chickawas, man. Oh, man, they, they incredible. So you got to keep asking yourself one question. Is it all worth it? Is any of this worth it? Is it worth your attention? Now, the people they drafted are not really going to be on the roster. A lot of the people they played, they might not get an opportunity to play next season because they're vying for a championship. So you're going to see what they have in development. And most of those players end up in the G League because it just happen to be. Not because they can't. Not because they can't play. It's because of the simple fact. Yeah, it's not because they can't play. Well, when you when you're dealing with uh someone that when you look at it it doesn't make sense or they're not passing what you would call the smell test. Right, the smell test ain't working out. I've never been a person who sat back and said, oh, well, this is what I want to do. Or uh, this is what, what I think just because I don't like the Lakers. I'm just going to say bad. If somebody's playing good, I'll tell you, man, they playing good. If someone's playing bad, I'm going to tell you, hey, they playing bad. I'm... That's just me. I, I don't know how to tell you anything other than. Now, y'all been watching basketball just probably as long as I've been watching it, right? So if you're watching basketball and you're watching the Los Angeles Lakers play, why would anybody, why would anyone be sitting here saying anything other than well you got a major situation for the brew because now this is probably the last year Anthony Davis is going to be there 
this is it. This is really the Lakers' year to see where they go. I think they have a bunch of pieces. But if you look at what is their starting five, it's going to be a revolving door once again. And when you are making LeBron James, a 39-year-old player, you're one of your first options. You know, I just, I just don't think you got enough to, to get the team to the next level. Will Vanderbilt start or will he come off the bench? He'll probably start some games and come off the bench. They still have Lonnie Walker the fourth, I believe, on the team. I believe I don't know if he's gone or what what have you, but I just know that they got a lot of um, players to adjust to. You know, a lot of players to adjust to right now. But Darvin Ham has had a large, a large say in who they're getting and who they're not getting this year. I'm very proud of where the Los Angeles Lakers are going from a basketball standpoint. Like to look at this this lineup. It's saying that they're getting length. They still got a lot of guards, but they got a lot of length and athleticism. Something that they needed a lot of. But, you know, when, you, when you're looking at where the roster is right now and who's on the team and who's not going to be on the team, uh, you got Christy coming back. You got... Hachimura coming back. You got LeBron. You got Reeves. You kept him. Of course, they were going to pay him. And he took a pay cut, basically, to stay with the Lakers. Um, you added Cam Reddish at small forward. Uh, Cam Reddish, to me, was decent, but he never really materialized into what I thought he was going to be. So, does Hachimura come in in the second unit, or does he start? You got Prince now. Do Prince come in the game? Do he start? You gave Vincent uh, be a backup, so I guess D. Russ is going to be the starting point guard of the team. So if your starting point guard and backcourt is going to be D. Russ and Reeves. Okay, so now that's already a bad defensive matchup. So defensively, they are going to have problems at the one and two again. Now, where does this leave the rest of the team? This puts a lot of pressure on Anthony Davis. And how healthy is he going to be this year? How available will he be for the season? That dark cloud over the Los Angeles Lakers have always been consistent with one thing. They are never going to have to deal with with a season of no adversity, no turmoil or turmoil on the inside of the organization. They're going to say, we need to fire Darvin Ham. LeBron James needs, Anthony Davis needs to stamp up. LeBron James needs more help. These guys are bums. LeBron's got to carry all the load. Why didn't we get Kyrie Irving? We know everything that you're going to say next season before the season gets here as soon as they lose one or two games not realizing you guys have help you guys have pieces that you need on a team you have young talent instead of 35 year old guys out there on the court trying to compete with these 20 year olds and getting ran off the court now what kind of shape will LeBron come in then he, he didn't come in in shape last year. It's the worst condition he ever came in starting the season. He was terrible. He played the season to get in shape. Used the NBA season to get himself in shape because he was too busy 
doing a whole bunch of nothing. So he decided, I'm going to use the season to get into shape. They started losing games. It was all his fault. And uh, next thing you know, oh, no one blames him. Then they make a trade and get better players on the team. And then they act like the whole thing was Russell Westbrook's fault. It's Russell Westbrook's fault? I don't even understand what that means. That just sounded dumb. So, like I always say, man, make it make sense. Make it make sense. Well, they can they can deal with the Joker. You got a. Uh, You got a lot of people with a lot of energy on the team. Uh, they will compete. I don't really know anything about Swider or whatever, whatever they got. But Fino, who they just got the rookie, I just don't think he's NBA ready. Like, I think he's too, well, obviously, I think he's too light. But that's not the point. I just don't think it with that pick, I think they would have been better taken. Uh, but, you know, he's somebody they could develop. He's not somebody that they finna depend on right away. You come into a team where the expectations is Western Conference Finals or championship. That's their goal. But look at what they got to go through in the West. You got Phoenix. You got Dallas. You got Denver. You have all those teams that are solidified, going to be the Giants fighting at the top. And, hey, the Memphis Grizzlies are still there. The Golden State Warriors are still there. So you have all these teams that's there. And then the best team is the Sacramento Kings. So they ain't going to get worse. So how do you keep up with that every night? You have to get players that can play and stay on the court. But when you have a dinosaur on the court, that dark cloud over the Los Angeles Lakers. Yep, number six. He is going to be huffing and puffing again, slowing down, not playing defense, and they're going to exploit him. Now you got five guys that can attack you. So when you get in a playoff series, how is that going to help you having a dinosaur out there who's huffing and puffing and can't get back up and down the court? How's that helping you? I'm just just talking to you. I'm just talking to you. Now I just like to have answers. You know, I'm somebody, I'm answer oriented. I'm someone that like answers. Don't give me the problem. Give me some answers. Give me some solutions for the problem. That's what I want to hear. I'm solution oriented. Well, people are going to make decisions. Every now and then, you know, somebody's going to rear their ugly head and say something stupid. Like, stupid. <laughs> I just hate LeBron. I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like his game. My thing is, I'm just, I just heard somebody say some of the dumbest things ever. There's one person up here like, he's won, what do you say? 
He won two titles without Wade. He's won two titles without Bosch. He won three titles without Kyrie. He won three titles without Kevin Love. He's won four titles without Anthony Davis. Or what is it? Three titles without Anthony Davis. Michael Jordan only won one playoff game without Scottie Pippen. <laughs> I, this this is the level of the mind I got to deal with now, man. This is this is where it's going. And I said, "This is what you're coming with. This is this is it." Well. Here it is. LeBron had all five of those guys. You just named one for Michael Jordan. Okay? We're moving on. And that was it. I don't want to entertain stupidity. Come with me and discuss basketball knowledge. And that's what we going to do. I'm going to go on the ground. I'm going to tell them all. They go on the Patreon. If the, one of the best Laker fans is on my Patreon and he wants to debate me in video format, we'll do it. Come on down. You get all your facts and stats about LeBron. And I will come in and crush it to oblivion. You says he's the greatest player of all time. Come prove it. Come prove it. We'll select the time. We'll, we'll put stuff to the side just so we can go ahead and get it done. Now, that's it. That's all. Shouts out to Kwame Brown Bus Life. Kwame Brown Bus Life 2.0. Ticket TV. The Dreamers Pro. Welcome to HD with the Two Eyes TV. Seahawks, Jose Rodriguez's channel. One Crack News. Of course, my Patreon, Carcino for Life. Donate to the Cash App which is, it happens to be Carcino, and I'm out.